Okay. All right. So this is the first of two sessions of Robert E. Howard's Conan. This is the third, I think, iteration, maybe fourth of Conan as an RPG. Yet another attempt to do it with, with gravitas and uh, awesomeness. Um, this is from Odiphius. It's their house system, which is a 2D20 system. And that makes sense to everybody, right? Um, and uh, it's used for Mutant Chronicles. Uh, it's used for their upcoming Star Trek game. Uh, and it's the, the base of this. And Lloyd, if I make fun of the game, please don't hurt me later on. Um, anyway, so we're going to be playing Conan. And uh, uh, we're going to be jumping in. We've got a quick start. Uh, we'll be putting the players have pre-gens. They're going to be put into the situation, uh, essentially, that they are on patrol uh, there between the Black River and Thunder River. That's where we're starting out, kind of in the wilderness. Uh, so it starts in the middle of things there. So this is combat, survival, difficult choices um, in this. And we're going to flesh it out, as we always do. We're going to play, play with that. Um, the tone is brutal. Uh, this is a game that has some brutality to it. It doesn't have critical hits, um, uh, but it, it is a game that can, can wear you down. They have a doom track and a resource point. I'll talk about system mechanics before we actually get playing and go, go through the basics of those. Now, this is Robert E. Howard's Conan, so uh, two things. A, the X card is on the table, as it is with all Gauntlet Hangouts games. Um, and I think everybody's familiar with that. Keith, are you familiar with the X card? I am. Okay, great. Uh, so if anybody happened watching this, it means that if we hit problematic material, material that you find objectionable, uh, phobic, um, uh, or uh, off tone, you can X card that. You can do that with either the, the marker or you can uh, send me a note and we will edit past it. I may ask uh, for a little clarification about what we're editing past, but we'll move on past it, no problem. Number two. So this is Robert E. Howard's Conan. Um, let us say that I love the way that Robert E. Howard writes visually and descriptively, but he's a little racist, um, and maybe more than a little in some of these parts. Um, and uh, uh, there's also a lot of aggressive stuff in here. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm not dwelling too much into that. We'll try and keep the, the flavor of Conan, but I recognize that I do understand that that the material, the source material is problematic in many regards. Um, but, uh, and I just want to get that out there on, on the table. Um, because I was listening and reading to some this week and I was like, ooh, and cringing uh, at a few spots there. So uh, we will come back to that. Um, so I'm gonna let the players choose their their characters, and then I'm going to talk about uh, uh, how the mechanics very basically work. We're using, if you're watching this at home, uh, we're also using Roll20, which has uh, an automated character sheet that someone did, so that has a die roller in it, but people will also be rolling dice at home. For those of you rolling dice at home, that's a uh, 2d20 at least, plus some d6s for damage. Um, so. Uh, does anybody have a particular pick that they want uh, out of the seven delightful pregens that the book provides? How am I going for Offwald? Okay. Well, then you are Offwald the Experience Tracker. That is set. It is writ in blood and stone. And so it shall be. Um, so all, uh, all you need to do is... Uh, Know that you can open up Othwald. You've got the bio sheet there and the character sheet. If you're looking on Roll20, you can can get at the character sheet there. I have it open. Okay. Okay. Um, and I should have that. Um, yeah, because I don't see you in Roll20 yet, Vince. Anyone else have a character? that you dig. Um, I'll just throw one out there. Um, I, don't, I don't think I have a strong preference, but I was looking at Amala, the Blade for Hire. Okay. I'm going to write that down, because that's the easiest way to do that. Oswald, Amala. 
We want to go for the full uh, uh, vowels. It starts with name. We've also got Edelstan and uh, 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 Edric. Keith, anything there looks awesome. I'm reading Edric the Grizzled Veteran. Why don't you just go ahead and mark that one down. All right. David, your choices have been reduced to four. Maeve, the Talented Archer. Okay. Um, so the system works basically like this. Um, if you look at your character sheet, any one of these character sheets, uh, you will see that they've got skills associated with an attribute. So for example, Malay is under agility. Uh, when you go to make a roll, you're taking that stat, let's say your agility is a nine, and then your expertise, let's say your expertise is one that gives you a 10. You roll 2d20. For every roll of 10 or less, that counts as a success. You also will likely have a focus value associated with that, which will usually be pretty close to your expertise. Um, like one, two, or three is the usual range on that. If you happen to roll that, number when you roll your and either d20 then that's two successes uh, the gist of the game is that you're testing against difficult difficulties uh, to hit somebody who's not dodging in combat you need to get one success to do uh, more complicated tasks is two uh, and so on that's the the basics of the game there are a couple of mechanics that supplement that uh, first, if you roll better than the, than you needed, let's say Jason, you go to hit somebody and you roll, uh, three successes and you only needed one, those extra successes become momentum. Uh, and you just, you just can record that on a piece of paper, however you want to do it. That's a resource that you can spend. Um, and, uh, in fact, there's a handout there that talks about how you can spend it. You can spend it to get extra damage, uh, to try and do uh, disarm, to reroll damage, to, to get back uh, things, to take an additional action, all of that. Um, uh, the GM has a thing called Doom Points, which is a similar currency. So uh, that's important. The weirdness of this game is that, let's say Jason does roll and get two extra successes, he gets two points of momentum. He has to use them on his action. If you don't, they go away. But you can put that into the group pool of momentum. So you can say, okay, I've got the two extra successes, I'm not gonna do anything with them, I'm gonna throw it into the group pool. Um, and uh, then that can be used by anybody. And those actually last from scene to scene um, they go down uh, one each round in a combat, and they go down one at the end of any particular scene. So it is a currency, even on like perception checks or things like that, that you can generate during the course of, of play. Um, there's a lot of funky bits. When we get to combat, we're going to slow down and look at some of that. Um, the other thing is damage. Uh, you'll see you have... Uh, with any of your particular weapons, you'll have uh, like three, four, two, five dice of damage. So this game, rather than rolling straight damage, uh, each die is rolled as a special die so they can sell funky dice, okay? Um, uh, so a one, or, a one gets you one point of damage that you do, a two gets you two points of damage. Threes and fours do nothing. You do nothing, no damage with those. Fives and sixes do a point of damage, but they can also trigger extra effects. For example, if you look at uh, your various weapons, you'll see that they have little, little uh, notes. Often they have things like piercing or volley or things like that, extra stuff. That means if you roll those uh, extras on the damage dice, you can trigger some of those abilities. Um, I also have a table, a handout with all those weapon qualities in them there. Any questions about that system stuff? 
we will we will we will will slow down when we get to it and we will figure it out it's it's not quite as funky as grim which is the last thing that around for for the uh the thursday night hangouts which was hot garbage um and uh so but this this game is is interesting i'm really curious it feels very crunchy kind of complicated to me um and i'm curious about how they're going to translate that over to star trek um which is the the game they have now so um let me give you guys a little bit of background about where you're at and what's going on. And then I want to have you tell me about how you picture your character. Um, I'll ask you some questions maybe to, to flesh some things out, um, particularly how you came to be here. Uh, so uh, you can see that on this, the, the big map, if you're looking on roll 20, you can see that you guys, uh, that there is an area off to the far west I'm going to kind of circle it here with apparently a maroon or dark pink colored line. I don't know why that was the default, but there we go. Um, anyway, uh, you're over in this area. These are the lands that the uh, Bostonian marches, the Aquilonians have pushed forward uh, past uh, the Thunder River and moved the Picts past the Black River. Now, the Picts in Robert E. Howard very much are his analog for Indian tribal uh, figures. Um, and so they are, are warriors. They are strongly apart from uh, civilized society. You four are scouts and uh, men-at-arms that travel along that area uh, between the two rivers. Uh, there are settlements there. There's also a fort. Um, and you essentially go and, uh, you know, keep watch, check on the settlements, the, the you know, the, the steads that are out uh, there, uh, and check in with the fort, make sure the bridge is intact, all of those kinds of things. The picks have been pushed back for a long time, but they still are there at the border. They are still on the other side of that river, and their war drums beat every night. It is known that at some point the Picts will reclaim what has been lost and push back the soft, pale-bellied Aquilonians back to where they came from. Now, uh, let me do this. I'm going to grab this thing here on this map level. I'm going to send that to the back. So you guys are in the Westermark and uh, I've pulled up a little map there of the, the area of the fort and the Settlers Road and so on. But we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so with that in mind about who your characters are just in terms of what you're doing now, um, Vince, you picked first. So in that sort of order of picking, I'm going to ask you to tell me how you are picturing Offwald. I'm uh, tired of being at home. Uh, I was close to the frontier. I live close to the frontier, but I wanted to be out in it. Uh, this is my my uh, my place of comfort is out dealing with the unknown. I can't handle the civilization anymore, even though. The average Aquilonian wouldn't call where I live civilization. So had, he fought in, had he fought in various wars then, traveled about quite a bit, or fought in one area particularly? Uh, no, all, all along the border, uh, the Pictish border. I know the Pictish savages. I know how to deal with them. And... Uh, what is your weapon? <clears throat> I don't know. I guess I better look. That's a good thing to know before we go into combat. Um, it's on air somewhere. 
Uh, it looks like I predominantly wield spear, battle axe, dagger. Okay, good, good. Um, just give me quick. What does he look like? How do you picture him? Uh, smallish fellow. Uh, deceptive. Strength and ability doesn't look like much, especially to the picks. It's, he gets uh, he gets uh, taunts from them constantly about that sort of thing, and then he shows them otherwise. Awesome. Any distinguishing features I should remember? Uh, pale gray eyes. Pale gray eyes. Unusual in Apollonian. Awesome. Yes. Jason, uh, how are you picturing Amala? Uh, physically, I'm just going to go with what it says on the pre-gen sheet, which is that she's tall and lean with grayish blonde hair, pale blue eyes. Uh, tunic and garments are of dull leather and wool with a voluminous cloak of dark muted purple. Uh, my broad girdle boasts a sword and knife um, and other weapons as well, according to this anyway. But I think on my sheet, I just have three. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, in terms of personality, I think that I am... Um, I think I keep to myself, except I don't really keep to myself. Like I, I think I talk to my weapons. Um, I think I believe my weapons have a personality. Uh, I'm going to go so far as to say that I think my my weapons are um, like my siblings that I never knew growing up. Um, I think I was like an escaped slave or something, and um, and so I think I have an ongoing conversation with my weaponry, and um, that that is I imagine that's probably occasionally alienating to the rest of the group because I I take company with them <laughs> uh, with my weapons more so than them sometimes. So. Does you, do you mean so? Does your blade have a name? Mm, I haven't named them yet. I'm going to come up with that uh, before right. we get there. But um, but I think uh, th th I, I don't. It, they're not actually like enchanted or have any kind of personality. Oh, no. I think it's just the way I perceive it. So and uh, so uh, I know Othwald, you know, warrior came to the the frontier. What drew Amala to this kind of service? I think, uh, well, I'm a blade for hire. So I think that um, I don't have any particular like ideological or political allegiances. Um, mm -hmm. I just go wherever I can earn some coin and uh, you know, that's it. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care too much about like the, the political, you know, machinations of what's going on around us. Um, I, just, I just go where the coin is, so. That seems fair. Yeah, pretty simple. Lead for hire. All right. Uh, let me come to you, Keith. And Edric, tell me how you're picturing Edric. Edric's a almost stereotypically nondescript uh, Namidian. Uh, Close-cut hair. Not so much a beard. as just um, he's uh, uh, not as fastidious about shaving as he was when he was in active duty. Um, kind of slight, but obviously very wiry. While um, while the other characters are spending their their coin, drinking and carousing and wenching, he's spending his maintaining his gear and oiling his sword, um, patching his armor, all the all the things that uh, someone who spent a lot of time as a professional soldier uh, tends to first. Um, his gear is all Namidian to make, except his sword, which is very clearly Aquilonian, and he doesn't talk about it much, um, but he may have mentioned once or twice that he took it as a, as a prize in, in a battle at some point. Um, so he was drafted by Numidia, but today, Numidia forced him to fight, and today Aquilonia pays him to fight, so he prefers being paid to being forced. Um, and uh, uh, his armor type is? He's uh, he's wearing a brigandine jack, which is you know brig is a it's a two layers of leather with metal plates riveted in between, so it's very um, it's not flashy looking. It's just it's just very um, stout and professionally made looking. Lots of visible rivets. Um, he carries a sword and he's a he's a reasonable shot with a bow as well. Although he's not much of a hunter, he's 
he's more of a you know not drawing loose kind of archer than a than a marksman and how how old would you say he is is he a is he a grizzled veteran but still oh, young in years or older no he's 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 old he's uh he's probably the oldest member of the of this group he's he's definitely uh in fact he's almost he's kind of surprisingly old for for a soldier and he's got the scars that bear witness to that lifetime of uh of being on the battlefield what would no, be the first scar that we'd see well, there's a real obvious one on his neck that looks okay. probably like it was. Uh, it's all very old, puckered, you know, pale, not not fresh or new, but it, it's it's ragged and and uh, nasty enough looking that it's uh, nobody has any doubt that it was a grave wound. And then, if you've seen him bathe, you've noticed he's got a few other remarkable ones here and there where he's obviously taken his fair of scrapes and cuts. Awesome. David, how are you picturing Maeve now that you know the trio that accompanies you? Mm. Maeve is small. Uh, I'm going off, like I'm not, I'm not following the bio especially sure. closely. Please. Um, <clears throat> I think she's small, she's slight, and she has kind of a chip on her shoulder and something to prove to these uh, picket tish, picket tan, what, what are they called? Picks. Picks. She's got something to prove to them that the ranged bow is better than the short bow. Uh, the picks are, I think, renowned for their tactics with the short bow, but she's coming here to show them that it doesn't matter because you, you can never get close enough to Maeve with your short bow tactics. She'll clean you out before you can get near enough. She has a, <clears throat> she has dark hair. Um, and her bow is like seven feet tall, even though she's like five feet <laughs> tall. Uh, it's like an impossibly, impossibly strong bow. It's like 20, 20 stone draw, which is like 300 pounds. It's like right. Insane draw. Uh, the arrows for it are, they have to be made from like a redwood tree because that's the only wood that wouldn't just shatter under the, the force of being launched by a bow this strong. So uh, she's trained specially with this weapon. Um, I think it says that there's a particular people that are famous for it and she is trained with them and she has come here to, to prove that it is the superior way. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So has she has she killed uh, a number of picks from the darkness? Just an arrow plucking out there, or does she declare herself before she she fires off? No, it, it would be impractical. She would have to run up, declare herself, run away, and then shoot them. That's how far away she shoots them from. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this patrol is is across these these uh, areas here that I've marked here in the uh, uh, Conahora province. Uh, fort uh, Tuscalon is the, the main fort that lies up there uh, uh, right on the edge of the Black River. It's a modest fort, maybe, maybe 80 to 100 men, um, but it is the primary watch fort for this area. Uh, following back uh, along uh, the Settlers Road, and by the way, I'm going to say Settlers uh, because I'm a Hoosier, and I'm going to apologize right now because that's not the way human beings should say that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> along the, the Settlers Road, um, there are various settlements, um, houses, uh, that kind of thing. This is some of the area that you patrol. You move down, check the, the bridge across its woods, throughout here, some denser than others. Uh, and of course, the, the road eventually leads on to Thunder River, which is much wider uh, and more perilous to cross um, and uh, to the city that lies there right on the edge of the Bassonian marches. Um, so 
Uh, let me ask you this, Vince, what has been over the last couple of days that you've been on patrol, what has been the thing that has been the worst? Uh, by worst, the worst event or? Either worst event or worst condition. What What is the thing that is is sticking with you guys right now? Uh, small bands of picks are are taunting out of the out of cover. They're uh, they're giving uh, they're trying to create confused signals as to how many there are. So some brazen attempts, some sling stones coming in different areas, them doing some fording at a couple of different places, and and signals have been been Cry. confused for you. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, Amala, uh, in uh, in and amongst uh, the people there at the fort, um, who is the person that you trust? I think the person that I trust the most at the fort is a young. Uh, it's a stable boy. Uh, uh, yeah, just a, like a stable boy named, we shall call him, um, uh, gosh, I hate thinking of names. Uh, we'll call him uh, Marcus. And Marcus. Marcus, the stable boy, I think the reason why um, we get along so well is because he is, uh, I think he's mute. And because he's mute, he can't. Um, he doesn't like. He doesn't like make fun of me or whisper about me or 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 just otherwise like prattle and say stupid things like people do. So. <laughs> he just sits there and listens to you while you speak to your to your weapons. Right. <laughs> Precisely right. Okay, I love that. That's great. Uh, Edric, you've been traveling around, making your your patrol routes, moving along. Again, to the, the west, the sounds of the drums from the picks as a regular, the war drums sort of continuously go. Um, on your patrol and travel around, um, what's, what's something interesting or valuable that you found as you guys were traveling? Patrolling on this side of the river? Yep. So... <clears throat> Uh, with the help of our uh, of our capable uh, tracker here, we actually located a couple of um, caches of supplies that the picks have been staging, and it's it's apparent uh, that they're planning something. They're sneaking them across the river and hiding them, and so rather than pilfer them or raid them, we've been uh, observing them, trying to figure out what is going on. What the the picks have in mind, um, but it it leads us to believe that maybe they're planning something a little more, uh, a little more uh, substantial than just the typical raiding and harassing. And I would assume cash would be you know, dried meats, dried venison, that kind of thing, and then dried meats, dried venison, arrows, um, uh, poultices and herbs, medical supplies, uh, things like that. Things that okay. uh, would allow a group of, of their raiders to operate away from their from their villages for a longer okay. period of time than usual. So we'll establish that that there are at least a couple places in in the general territory that you you know that there are these these caches that are out there. Okay, that sounds good. Um, my last question is for Maeve. Maeve, um, who is it that you know at the settlements? And these are the non-PIC settlements, right? Yep. Yeah. The this is your settlements, the ones that you are watching, trolling the farmers and uh, uh, herdsmen and people who have have uh, rested this land and are are uh, building up homes here. Uh, I know Wes. Okay. And tell me about Wes. Um, Wes is a carpenter or woodworker. 
uh, I suppose. Um, he helps me out when I'm trying to find the supplies that I need for my weaponry. Um, and I help him out by letting him know, like, when we find a particular grove so he can send uh, wood choppers. Because he, he, he does, like, some fine craftsmanship, like, kind of work for the mm -hmm. nobles. So he, he needs particular kinds of wood sometimes. And since it's a little bit war torn around here, it's it's hard to get stuff from far away. So if you can find it locally and hire some people to go chop it down and bring it back, like that works out better for him. So probably some of the oldest of the oak growths here, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, there are various different kinds of oaks, a particularly strong one that comes from this area that grows particularly straight um, and is well regarded. So yeah, that and some other kinds of, of valuable um, decorative woods, ash, and that kind of thing. All right. I, I like that. So you four are there, and it has been a hard few days of travel. Um, you are uh, essentially uh, down south of the, the Bramble Creek. Um, uh, off the road, you've been moving around. Uh, uh, you're heading up towards uh, the, the north to head back home. And uh, you hear a change. It The drums have been going on. I mean, it's getting on dusk, getting on dark, and the drums every night they start when darkness falls, and it's that pounding, that rhythmic, regular pounding on great uh, hide-topped uh, uh, drums that they have across, that they have along the river there. They, they know this is unnerving. They do these drums. But now the tempo has changed. Now there are different beats. Now some of the drums are going in, in one set of counts and another doing in other sets of counts, and you can hear the drum start and immediately you will realize that something something is going on that something has certainly changed um and uh you've been walking along uh the the road here uh, pines coming down and even as you hear that uh that drumming and that beat what I need is everybody to make an observation roll. Under awareness. Yes. Lowell, I rolled two 20s. <laughs> All right. So 20s means, but are critical <laughs> failures in this game, um, and uh, they create problems for you. Um, well, so I'm glad I got them out of my system. Got them out of your system early. <laughs> okay. Um, Get so, it done early before we're fight, fight, actually fighting anything. Yes. Um, uh, so Keith, looks like you didn't get success. No. no. Okay. Uh, David, how are you? I've got a six and an eleven. I don't know what that means. Uh, what is your? Let me look at your awareness is ten. Okay, and what's your expertise with obser observation? Uh, one. Then that's an eleven. So yes, an eleven is a success. Okay. Um, so that's two successes, I believe. A six and an eleven. Yes. Yep. That's yeah. two. Vince, what about you? I rolled on my uh, device here. Okay. I got, uh, it was just 2d20? 2d20. Uh, a 1 and a 13. Okay. Um, and what's your observation? Uh, the ex expertise 3, focus 3. Okay. Um, nice. So you're going to have a, a, a couple of successes there, so I think that's what were the two numbers you rolled? You rolled a one and a thirteen. Okay. Um, so, and what's your awareness stat? Nine. Nine. Okay. So you're going to get two successes. So that gives you uh, you can record having one momentum. 
David, you have one momentum. Um, players no go first. That's how this initiative works in this game. The, the only way that that sequence gets broken is if I spend Doom from the Doom pool. I'm not going to do that the first combat. I will later on. Um, so the problem is, is that uh, 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 for uh, Amala and for uh, Edric, you are taken unawares on this first round. Um, and uh, uh, in particular, when they come out of the woods, these five picks come rushing out and they have hatchets, they have short bows str strung across their backs, they are running, they're young braves. One of them hits you, Amala, um, and you've been drawing out your blade because you heard the drums, and when he hits you, your blade goes flying off into the brush. Um, so, uh, right now the situation is you've got five braids that kind of moved in, uh, they're kind of close on you. Uh, let's start with uh, you, uh, uh, then, I'm going to get the names right, Othwald, what do you want to do? You're muted, Vince. Yep. Tell me, I've forgotten the shortcut key to get rid of the mute. What is it? You guys know? Uh, no, I always just click the button. All right. I'll look it up. Sorry. No worries. Uh, who was so just attacked? So there are five picks. They've come rushing out of the woods. I imagine that there, there are stands of pine and, and thick brush, and the woods are dark. They're, they're gloomy and overcast. The, the, there's little light. You guys were considering, you know, whether you would move to, to, to torches at this point. But these things, these, these picks come rushing out. And I want you to imagine they have war paint across them. They're pale-skinned, but they've painted their faces uh, black and then drawn a skull on that. So we've got that sort of black and then the white skull on it. And one of them has knocked into uh, uh, Amala and sent her blade flying. Uh, and you can see that uh, uh, Edric is close by. He is also taken unawares. It looks like just you and uh, Maeve uh, have got your wits about you to respond to this assault. Um, it looks like they, the, the Braves themselves may not have been aware that you guys were here, came rushing out, and now they've engaged in this combat. What do you want to do? I'm going to head for the one that uh, collided with uh, Amala. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so right what there. you're going to do is you're going to look at your Malay, uh, and uh, you're going to be rolling 2d20. Um, what is your Malay? Uh, your agility, your melee, and your focus, essentially your expertise and focus. Uh, agility is nine. Expertise okay. and focus are both three. Okay. So you need a 12 or less, and if you roll a three or less, you get two successes. The difficulty is one. That's the default difficulty here because they're not defending. They're not spending reaction to do that. So go ahead and roll the 2d20. A two and a 13. Two and a 13. Uh, so that's going to be three successes. That means you're going to have two momentum that you can uh, spend. Uh, the, if you I can wanna, push that to the group. You can push that to the group if you want. We can put no, that out push there. Push that to I, the group to help the others. Okay. All right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to roll your damage. And I assume you're using your, you have a spear or a sword. What is the, the weapon you have it using? Uh, I would say I was just carrying this spear. Okay. That seemed more appropriate to the night walking. Absolutely. Uh, that does five damage. Uh, you can roll that either 5d6, or you can actually hit the little button um, beside the spear thing, and that will auto roll on roll 20. Let's do that. Uh, modifier damage is asking me nothing. nothing. So okay. Uh, so uh, you do uh, a lot of damage, um, a whole lot of damage. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. Um, you also get a couple of specials. Your thing is piercing. The specials on the die roll there uh, for the damage meant that it would go past armor. Um, these guys have no armor, but you essentially, um, six plus that, uh, will run this guy uh, uh, through. He is he is nearly dead with that one shot. The spear goes in. Where do you hit him? Uh, well, right through that that lovely painted skull. Okay, so <laughs> hit that goes across, probably comes uh, across there, probably goes through the cheek uh, and tears off there, and he will cry out uh, in pain um, as this figure looms over and strikes with the spear. Maeve, what are you doing? Um, I drive a bundle of arrows into the ground and quickly draw one okay. and hit the next nearest one. Okay, uh, then go ahead and make your roll. It's 2d20. We're using ranged. <clears throat> okay. I've got two nines. Two nines. Uh, so I, I believe that is two successes for you. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely going to be two successes. I want to make sure I don't hit anything else special. My coordination's 11, ranged weapons of four expertise and four focus. Uh, and so I guess I just roll damage now. You just roll damage. Okay. You can either roll the 4d6 or you can uh, uh, hit, hit the button there. I hit the button. Okay. Um, now uh, you can re-roll one of those dice. Yes, because that's my special. Yep. So uh, just roll, roll, just roll a d6. Just roll another d6. All right. I'll yeah. just, I'll just roll a physical d6 here. I got a five. Five. Uh, so that'll do a special. So that means you're going to do five points of damage to him, and the warbow has piercing. So if he had had uh, armor on, it would have gone through his armor. Okay. Uh, with a special on that. Uh, but as it is, uh, much like the one that uh, uh, Othwald hit, it, it goes, where does it hit him? Uh, it hits him in the chest. Okay. Hits him square in the chest. There's that thing where he sprouts the arrow. Uh, it comes from nowhere, and it's huge. I mean, you've, you've described it as long, so it's not like the little black uh, arrows that they have with the, 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 the sort of the crow feathers for the fletching. This is a, a larger one, and it sprouts out, and he will stagger back as he looks at that uh, from his, his chest. Um, um, can I spend one point of momentum to make my action happen in half the time? Uh, let's look at the, the thing, what it says here under the momentum spend. You can spend it to do... Um, d -d 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 you can actually uh, spend two momentum to do another shot. Um, the difficulty just increases by one when you do that. Oh, I see. All right, I only have one... Wait, There's do I have two, two momentum? momentum? From the group. Hang in the group There's pool. One. Yep. Uh, I know I have one momentum that I had. Right. So it's, if you want to take one from the group pool, you can do that. Uh, that's all right. I'll, just, I'll pass the action. Okay. Um, all right. Well, the bad guys are going to go now if you don't do that. Oh, fine. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take one of theirs and use one of mine to take an, an additional shot. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I got a one and a five. So that's three successes, I believe, with your expertise and your focus. Um, so you're going to get back that momentum, and you get to roll damage. Cool. I'll hit the button. Go. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you, I assume you put that shot, that second shot in the same guy? Yeah, I'll just, yeah, we'll hit the same guy. That, that finishes him. Where does that one go? The first one kind of targeted, marked him on the chest. You got the range on him in the second one. So I think he was like up in the air, like jumping to try and get on someone. And I hit him low. And it like, this is an impossibly big bow. It actually like launched him backwards up into the air. And I pull another one before he hits the ground and hit him again. It's like shooting awesome. a tin can, like a cowboy shooting a tin can. Okay, yeah. He will, will go flying backwards. Um, so there are four of them left. Um, so I'm just going to kind of divide those those uh, attackers out uh, evenly among the four of you. Um, one of them sprawled, uh, drops uh, to the to the pine needles below. Um, so let's start with the one on you, uh, Othwald. Um, now, uh, 
Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to make an attack on you with their attack roll. Um, you can opt to take a reaction to try and roll a parry if you wish. Uh, if you do, uh, then uh, uh, it will give me a doom point. So taking reactions out of turn uh, uh, gives you uh, essentially gives me a doom point when you do that. Um, do you wish to defend when this guy goes to hit you? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I will increase my doom up by one. I will make a note of that for myself in just a second. So I'm going to go to 13. Uh, so he is going to roll to hit. I should probably actually do the right syntax. Uh, so he is going to hit you. So go ahead and make your parry roll. These guys are, are lesser foes, so they are only rolling 1d20 for their attack on you. Uh, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get that last part. Uh, so you just need to roll your parry roll. Roll 2d20 okay. and check your parry. And you need to get at least one success to knock aside this blow. Okay, looks can, like you miss. Uh, so it's in the chat portion on roll 20. Uh, you rolled and you got a 14 and a 15. Uh, so you won't make that on that roll. Um, so I am going to roll damage on you. Um, and that is with the hatchet is that. You're going to take seven points of damage. Let me tell you how this works now. Do you have armor? I have some, uh, I believe, scarabs. Okay. What's the what's the rating on that? Uh, it looks like uh, a one. Okay, so you're going to take you're going to take six points of damage, and the way you record that is uh, you're going to mark that under vigor. Right now, you start with 10 vigor, and uh, and you can record that either with little boxes up top, or you can just write it down. Um, so you're going to take six. You have four vigor left. Um, when you okay. get hit and you run out of vigor, that's when you actually take wounds that affect you. All right. I'm going to make a shot on you, Keith. Do you wish to roll a defend against this? You can do that because it's not a reaction because um, uh, you haven't taken an action yet. Okay. So, sure. Okay. Um, so, uh, let me... Parry or? It will be... Parry, you don't have to do it because it well, wasn't going to hit. So, let's not even worry about that uh, on the mechanics just to move things forward. Does that seem reasonable? Sure. sure. Okay. Um, uh, Amala, um, uh, you did a double critical failure straight out of the, of the gate, so I am just going to roll to hit you, okay? That's fine. <laughs> so uh, they will hit you, and I'm going to roll my damage on you. What's your armor? Let's see. Uh, I have leathers. Okay, and what's the rating on that? Um, it has just a bunch of ones down the line. So okay, it's yeah, one. so one is <laughs> just one. I, I put. I don't know why I put it in all the boxes. I could have just put it in the one box, and it, everybody would have been happy. Um, <laughs> but I had to be a completist. So anyway, so I'm going to subtract one from the damage that I'm doing here. Um, so it looks like they are doing uh, three points of damage, but it is also... Uh, uh, let me see what Vicious does, which I probably should have 
Uh, they do three points of damage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, actually, sorry, uh, four points of damage because of the effect bonus. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to mark that off your vigor. Okay. And so I've got like the last six of my boxes are filled already. So I'm just going to mark four more from there. Like... Uh, yeah. Uh, your vigor, uh, let me see, with, Amal, uh, with Amala, your, your vigor is... It must be nine. Nine. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. I couldn't figure out a good way to do it because that's not a good way to do it on the sheet. I don't know why they designed it that way. Yeah. All right. Um, so imagine that it, this, this, there are two of them that leapt out. One of them knocked the blade aside. Uh, uh, Othwalt uh, knocked that guy, but this other guy just buries the hatchet in your shoulder there. Mm. And he's, he's screaming. Imagine he's right in your face when all mm. of that happens. Um, and uh, Maeve? Uh, this guy is going to come running at you. Um, the question here is, do you want to to parry, or should I just roll for my attack on you? I'll just go ahead and roll for the attack. Okay. Well, that'll miss, so that was a good call on your part. Um, so that's the round. They've, they've come at you. There are four of them. Uh, we come around. PCs go first on this round. Um, uh, because uh, uh, Vince gave me the doom. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend two doom and have the, the guy on uh, uh, Uthwalt go first. So let me get that set. So my question for you now, uh, Vince, is do you want to parry on this round? If you do, then that'll be your action, um, uh, or you can do it as a reaction and give me more doom, or I can just take the shot on you. I'll do it as a reaction. Maybe okay. All right, so this is your first one for the round, uh, so I'll boost my doom track back up. All right, uh, so I'm going to take the shot on you. You can go ahead and roll parry. Oh, because I have two successes. Oof. Nice. Uh, yeah, you got a three and an eight, which is actually, um, what's your parry focus? That looks like it's a one, so you're all good. So yeah, uh, so you knock it aside. You bring it up. This guy comes and he's fast to, to on the follow up, and he uh, misses, or rather, he goes in to hit you, but you bring the blade up and knock it aside. Um, because she didn't get to act last round, I'm actually gonna have Amala act first because uh, I want to know what she's gonna do. Amala, what do you do? So I have this guy like on top of me, right? Like screaming yes. in my face or whatever. Okay, so one of my skills is, um, I mean, I, I, I think I always have daggers. Like that's a thing that's oh, yeah. about my character, right? And so I'm gonna try to take a dagger and uh, stick it between his ribs. So. Okay, get that out and drive that in. There's no cost, free action essentially to draw. Go ahead and roll your attack roll. Mm -hmm. Difficulty is one. God damn it, I got double 18s. What the fuck? <laughs> like, like they're the two, they are, they, it's insane. <laughs> double 20s. That's the problem with 18s. rolling real versus virtual dice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you God, probably, probably right. run it along his ribs, but you you're, don't get the angle you want on it. So <laughs> again, you two are caught up, you know, in that, that embrace. You can see your blade. Uh, uh, sort of the glint of it just for a moment out in the woods. But this guy, you know, he's going to have to go to, to, to knife too because he put that hatchet in your shoulder. So he is wrestling with you. Um, okay. Let's go. I'm going to go left to right. Maeve. So now I'm engaging with one that's right on top of me, right? You said there's yes. one basically on top of me. Uh, yeah. You can spend a momentum to, to get out of Malay without getting tagged. Or like, or else he gets a free swing at me or something. Uh, yeah, essentially, if you go to do that, he's gonna tr gonna be able to interrupt on you if you try to draw the the bow while you're in melee. You could switch to a melee weapon. 
Um, I'll I'll spend one momentum to get out of it and and take a shot on him. Okay. Um, so how, what does it look like when you when you when you get out of that melee? Well, he comes screaming out of the forest and tries to like attack me with a hatchet, um, and I just sidestep him and then just kind of push him down and uh, take a few quick steps back, grab another bow out of the bundle that I stabbed in the ground and draw it to shoot at him while he stumbles. Awesome. Let's see you roll that attack roll. Uh, uh, 18 and 16. So I believe that's going to miss. I think you're right, but let's make sure. Do you have any re-rolls on uh, archery tests? Coordination... 11 plus range weapon for focus four. So that would have been, yeah, let's do this. Um, beyond that damage, I don't believe. I okay. Don't, I don't believe so. Um, so, uh, so you will fire that off. He's a little close. You've got out of, of, of the range, uh, but you weren't able to uh, get that shot on him as, as quickly as you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, let's come to uh, Edric. Edric, um, they're all up in everybody's face. Uh, you know, they're they're pressing to make it difficult for the range uh, combatants to do this. What do you want to do? So the one I'm facing off with is armed with what? Uh, so he's got a hatchet. That's essentially they're they're trying to primarily get that in uh, to to blood you, and then they'll move in close and uh, try to work at you with a knife. Okay. So. When he raises his hatchet to a, to attack, I'm just gonna dash it aside with my shield and step inside his stroke and just drive my sword through his neck. Perfect. Or so I will describe it. Okay, let's have you make your, your attack roll. Difficulty is one. Come on, now. Roll twenty. These dot. This character sheets are set up to roll, right? Yeah, this should be right beside the. Uh... Yeah, the little die. It's not rolling for me. All right, so that's fine. Whatever. Let me just do it this way. And you got a decent there. Um, no, five and fourteen. So that's one success. And um, that's enough. Difficulty is one. All right. So, and it looks like the sword. I do five damage. I think. Yep. Uh, you can try and hit the die be be beside it, see if that works. Well, let's just do that. And I think I can re-roll right. one, um, one of those. Yeah, so the three, the three or a four. Or the three or the four, so I've got a four there, so I'll re-roll that. So one, two, okay. and the five and the six do what again? They do a one point of damage, and they also, uh, what is the uh, effects on your sword? Anything? Yeah. Um, it looks like actually the sword that you have just does pairing. It doesn't do any any extra stuff. All right. So you do two for the two, three, uh, four, five. So five points of damage. So yeah, you you drive this into him, um, and essentially he's uh, uh, catches his breath back as the blood sprays out of his shoulder. He's still up, but you can see that that. Uh, uh, another shot like that, and he will be be down. Sound good? That sounds good. How much momentum do we have? Uh, you have one momentum in the pool right now. Okay, so never mind. Can we use that? Nope. Okay. Um, uh, so let's come to, to Uthwalt. Uh, Othwalt, um, your action. All right, so I'm picturing that that first hit that I did, putting this, this spear through the pig's head and that could be kind of a bad thing i it's stuck in there really well okay and gone through the cheek stuck so, there so i'm seeing the other guy that came at me i used the butt of my spear to parry the one guy okay and now as he's sailing past i'm going to give it a good yank and put the butt of that spear in the back of that dude's head okay Go ahead and make your attack roll. Difficulty is one. You need one success at least. Uh, 
also done All right, melee again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do all. All right, so that's two successes. So that will, uh, you've got a momentum from that. Um, and you can go ahead and roll your damage. Okay, um, so it looks like you're going to do uh, uh, five points of damage, in, and is there any bonus effect on that weapon? Uh, I don't think you That's know. the... Piercing that I would imagine not on this end. Ah, yeah, no, so that's just uh, piercing means uh, that... Uh, uh, it would go through armor. So yeah. uh, that would do five hits. So essentially what we've got right now is there are four guys left, um, and three of them are blooded. Like blood is pouring out of them. They're they're heavily wounded, and another shot could conceivably take them down. Um, so the two that Can are I by... Can use that momentum to push them down to the ground? Uh, you could Make spend sure the, the, the group momentum and... Uh, well, I'm my, your, my one. And you're one to do another shot if you want to do another attack. Uh, I just wanted to balance him some more. I, I didn't want to use the group one. Um, let me see, let me see how it describes him. If there's anything interesting here that can do that. Um, there's nothing really for that. Um, uh, at the end of this fight, I'll tell you another mechanism that you have. But uh, for the moment, uh, we'll see that you have okay. a. Two I'll put it in the group. Okay, so we're at two momentum in the group. Um, okay, um, so uh, this picked warrior that you shot at, Maeve, um, is going to try and get in again. Uh, he tried to hit with the uh, hatchet. Is now going to try and just hit you with. A, a knife shot. Um, okay. Um, hey, I see that I have this uh, deflect skill that reduces a defense reaction using the parry skill by one doom. That means that you're that. That's a very good point. That gives you a free parry each round. Cool. I'll do that. Okay. Now we've learned things. Uh, so go ahead and roll 2d20. Okay, I got a 7 and a 14. Okay, uh, so you will go to, to Perry. He kind of comes in and, and uh, you will knock it aside. The shot is weak. You're tiny, so he wasn't quite taking you perhaps as seriously as he ought to have um, and uh, doesn't get that in on you. Okay. Um, all right, uh, let's take the shot on Amala. Um, Amala, do you want to give me a doom so you can roll a parry? I will, yeah. Okay, delicious. I've already taken <laughs> some hits. Yep. All right, uh, so go ahead and roll uh, your parry roll. Um, I have one low number, so I think that's... Well, let me check... Let's see here. Uh, oh yeah, I've yeah I've, I've got one hit. So okay, and I only got one success. So yes, you'll be able to to turn that knife aside as he comes in on you. Nice. Um, Edric, what about you? I'm gonna come and take a shot at you with this blooded guy. Oh, Perry. Okay, I will put another point in my doom pool then. Okay. Uh, slash roll. Go ahead and roll your parry. Got one success. Ha! Of course. <laughs> it's mandatory. 
I got two successes. Two successes. So you actually will add a momentum to the pool. Right on. And uh, turn that blow aside uh, as he, he comes in at you, knocking it. And your weapon is a sword, right? Yes. Yeah, so good standard sword as you knock that aside. Um, and last one is on you, Vince. Uh, do you wish to parry? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put my doom up at the highest value I have on my little tracker thing and do that. Um, so I have a hit on you, so go ahead and roll your parry. Perfect. So your momentum it pool is right now at a four. Uh, we flip over to the next round. Uh, who wants to go first of the PCs? Oh, I will. Okay, Keith, uh, what is Ed Edric doing right now? Uh, again, Tussle Malay, it's it's dark. You can hear the pounding of it. You can probably, as you guys are fighting, you even in sense that there are more troops moving around uh, in, in the woods in different directions. It's just that this group is caught on you. What do you want to do? Well, I need to dispatch this guy that I've already wounded real quick so I can put the boot in on this one that's wrestling with Maeve on the on the or not Maeve with uh, Amala on the ground. So perfect. I've just I've just stricken his inexpert axe blow to one side. So on the backhand, I'll follow through and try to just finish him off. Bring that through. Have it make your attack roll. Difficulty is one. And I think I'm yeah. Ugh. So no successes. No successes. Um, let's see. Um, can you? I don't think you're going to reroll an attack roll, but you can spend two to get another shot. But the difficulty would be two. I'll do it because nobody's using this momentum. So delicious. Spend those resources. There we go, and there it is. Twelve and thirteen, which are both successes. Excellent. Um, so, uh, that will, uh, hit, uh, so, uh, go ahead and roll your damage on this guy then. Oh yeah. D describe that to me cause you, you cleave him. <laughs> okay. So I, uh, I, I've parried his axe blow. I turn, I, I, I take him with the backhand. And I'm so certain that I've dispatched him as I'm turning to render assistance to Amala. It's not for just a half a moment that I realize that I actually miss. So I turn around very deliberately and follow through properly and drive my Aquilonian sword all the way through his Adam's apple and out the back of his neck. Goes through with a, a meaty sound there. Um, uh, you know, there's a blood spray and you have to kind of pull back to drag it out again. Amala, you were knocked down by this guy. He was coming in again and then, uh, Edric, uh, finishes him off. Um, there are two wounded picks and one fresh one, uh, attacking Maeve. What do you want to do? I'm going to go out for the fresh one. Okay. Uh, run over there. Um, attacking with daggers still, I assume. Yep. Okay. Let's have you roll your attack roll. Got a 14 and a 17, which I think is two misses. <laughs> okay, what's your melee skill? Um, I have a, it's 13 plus with a focus oh. of one. So oh. so just short on that. Yeah. Now, you could spend the last spend two the momentum two. in the I pool. Am. Okay, that's, <laughs> yes. All right, well, another shot. I'm determined to hit something, god damn it. I got one hit this time. One hit, which is not enough with the follow-up action. You need two because yeah. the difficulty increases by one. Um, so you are in up on him uh, and uh, have given Maeve some breathing room, uh, but uh, uh, have not been able to to get the, the, the blade into a Maeve. What do you do? All right, so I have enough room to fire my bow, or am I in melee? Uh, uh, you, I would say because she came up on that, uh, that I'll let you withdraw for free. Okay, cool. That seems like a good good effect there, especially since she spent momentum on it. <laughs> right. 
All right, then we'll take a shot. Okay. 12 and 3. So that's three successes if I'm reading your skill yeah, uh, I think that's, correctly. I think that's uh, right. So that's two momentum in the pool again. And uh, go ahead and roll damage. All right. Find it. There it is. Roll. Go. Okay. And uh, what's this? What is? Is there anything special on your bow? What are the traits on it? Uh. uh where do I see that? It should be on the weapon line. It should be in the last thing under the notes. Uh, piercing one. Volley. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Volley just means you can pick things things up afterwards. Um. So uh, that's going to do seven points. So, uh, uh, that's enough to get through his vigor and do the wound to him. So he will drop. Um. Cool. So uh, where do you hit him? Tell me about how that looks. So where was he before? This was which uh, he he's t tangled up with uh, Amala. She's she's drawn his attention off. Oh, nice. Um, so they're wrestling a little bit, and I just like I'm still I'm like really close, like just a few feet away. Um, and I think Amala's kind of got him like held by the lapels, and then mm -hmm. a, a bolt or a a shaft goes like into one shoulder, kind of like through his entire chest and just like throws him out of her hands. Okay. Yeah. And as he falls, you can feel his body turns. You can probably hear the crackle uh, as the, the arrow kind of snaps inside of him. Okay. Um, and uh, he will collapse to, to the ground. Um, uh, so that brings us to you, uh, uh, Uthwald. We've got two, two wounded guys left. All right. So, I'm assuming one of them was the one that went past me and I got clocked in the back of the head. Yep. We've got the, essentially the, the guy who cut half of his face off and the guy that you clocked on the backswing. Right. Uh, I don't know if this is an easy or hard thing to do, but it seems appropriate. Like, I can't get the spear around. Okay. So I'm going to pull the, the axe off my belt. So that's a free, switch, weapon switch. Free action to do that. Okay. And uh, you and can then, make a uh, roll with that. Yeah. Come come up under with the blade. Bring that up with that up swing. Okay, let's have you roll. All right. So I want to do my. Uh, another pop up. Thing. Yes. Okay, so that will hit. Uh, I believe a three actually is two successes for you. Um, so go ahead and roll your damage. I think I vamped all of Jason's rolls. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. All right, so damage. Uh, I don't know how to do it, but. I'll sure. my talents. I have no mercy. No mercy. Re -roll re -roll one die. Well, go ahead and roll uh, the, the dice there. Oh, that was the oh. wrong thing, sir. Yep, no, that's okay. Uh, battle axe. Yep. You don't even need to re roll on that. Because that is okay. that is a vicious blow. Uh, tell me how that lands. All right. Well, when I'm pulling the when I pull the uh, axe off my belt and just come up, it's a, a quick pull. It's straight up the jaw. Okay. Uh, cuts in. Uh, probably cuts through that bottom jaw. Uh, the 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 blade half to the axe. Uh, uh, sinks up into the upper palate of it, and you have that uh, that you have to do as you pull the axe back out, and he will collapse to the ground. Um, this last picked um, will take off 
on his action, uh, uh, essentially wounded, go running back into the woods, um, uh, essentially back the way he came just to, to, to get away and to, to fade off the darkness. And you guys will be able to, to catch your breaths and realize that you have a decision. You, you have to figure out where you need to go, where you, where you want to go. Do you go to, to the fort? Do you go to the, to warn the settlers? Or do you run and get the hell out of here? And we'll take up that question uh, after our five-minute break.
So, David, have you been doing that mediation thing? Yeah, a bit. Do um, you like it? It's okay. The two that I've been in have been, like, dysfunctional for various reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was neither person showed up. Both of them teleconference called in. One of them spoke Spanish, so we had to have a translator. It was just, like, oh, wow. just a logistical nightmare. Um, yeah, that, so that was a mess. And then the other one, um, both sides were represented by lawyers and one of the lawyers was just there to, um, to destroy the mediation and not mediate. So, oh, okay. That was, <clears throat> that's a, that's a thing. Um, <laughs> that's, wow. Um, if they, yeah, like sometimes the lawyers want to go to court. Um, so they, just kind of torpedo the mediation. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, continue on. Uh, so the way damage works in this game is all the vigor damage that you took, that's all kind of temporary. So at the end of combat, you can catch your breath and you will clear all that vigor damage. You only really take wounds and uh, wounds cause, you know, uh, uh, sort of permanent, at least temporary minuses. They require real energy to heal um, after you've run through all that vigor. So imagine it's kind of like a a first pool of hit points. So you can have two pools of hit points because two pools of hit points is better than one, right? Right? Get Just 2D20. like 2D20 is better than yes. one. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, uh, so... Uh, you will find yourselves there. You can hear the, the drums still going. You know that there are, are picks, groups, and war bands out in the woods. Uh, and you have to decide what you want to do as a group. Um, so we take up probably with uh, Amala having found her blade. Um, you just call it by name and have it. You know, <laughs> um, and some some bandaging up and patching, um, and and the four of you discussing what to do next. Well, I'm wondering if the soul incursion, how it matches up with the the taunts out of the woods that they were making earlier. It does seem like that would have been a, a lead up that they were as much as anything testing and seeing where where the defenses were, if there were other forces at play. Um, and they probably realized that it was some patrols like yourselves and and a a fort that is not fully fully defended. Does that seem reasonable? So I feel like they might be making a push on the fort. They're probably making a push all across. Yeah, um, they are definitely moving. I will say to the group, <clears throat> my brother and my sisters are clearly angry with me right now. And until we reconcile, I will be no good in any more fights. And so we should not stay here long. Well, 
What are the Aquilonians right. paying us to do? I beg your pardon? What are the Aquilonians paying us to do? They are paying you to act as scouts and patrols to look for incursions from the picks, to warn of incursions, um, and to fight off any stray picks that you would find in the area. Um, essentially, you are the, the, the roving scouts and guards. Well, then we need to report this if, if it's not already too late. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't see why one group of us should not warn the village and the other warn the fort. Uh, because splitting us into two groups is likely to get one or the other of them killed if they run into another war party. That's why. It's better if better two should should perish than in, in, in the attempt to warn all parties than just to let one f either fort or or townsfolk settlers be found unaware, surely. <clears throat> do you feel for your own life? You do not think that you can handle yourself? Just you and one other? I'll look at the dead pigs laying on the ground and say, no, I think I can handle myself just fine. The, the point is, we're paid to warn the fort in the event of a Pictish attack. So that's what we need to do. Then you won the fort. Oh, God. It's a hero in every party. Yep. I do not how fear. You, how do you make it in mercenary work with that attitude? <laughs> I do not fear these picks. I will warn the settlers, though, as they have much, much reason to fear the picks. Who is who will go with me? Or you do I need to, to take take this on were, alone? You were going to go warn the village? Yeah, the settlers okay. or the whoever. Settlers, yeah. <clears throat> I say we shall go with you. I'll look at Ogmund or off offwald rather. See what he says. Well, as I hang my head, I I can't leave one I can't leave one person go on their path. I'll have to, I'll have to split. Fine. I guess it's better to be alive and penniless than. Safe in the fort, or not even safe in the fort. The fort's probably not going to be safe for very long, but I guess it's better to be alive and penniless than well paid and dead. So, you want to go warn the village? Let's go warn the village. So, we're not we're not doing what I suggested. Letting them know. No. It, it seems like you have turned their hearts right. and minds to warning the village, Maeve. No, that was not the point. The point was that both parties be warned. <laughs> well, right, I'll, I'll take the run. I, I, I know the, I know the tracks. There, and if I, if I'm attacked, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stay and come back. How, how stealthy are you, uh, uh, Othwald? Do you think you could slip past him unseen? Maybe. I think I get to the fort, I'm going to find that it's already invested. I have a stealth skill, if that matters. Well, or talent or whatever it's called. We all do. But oh, do we all? Have, well, it's. I mean, I have a talent called stealthy. Ah. ah. Sounds like you are extra stealthy. I'm extra stealthy. Right. She gets to re-roll one of her d20s, which Jason might need. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I swear. No, I just need to stick to things that are not combat until right. I work this stuff out. So, <laughs> In fact, I'm whispering to my sword. I say, what have I done to cause you to want to flee from my side right at the start of the battle? And what do I have to do to get you 
away from this place in which you find yourself. All in favor of letting her go to the fort by herself? <laughs> we I shall go to the fort. <clears throat> yes, yes, then the run along, dear. Be, the numbers will be in my favor. It will be four and three. Very good, then. You run along with your family and let the fort know the pigs are moving. Yes, we shall. We will do our best to keep our arguing at a level which will prevent us from being detected. Awesome. Now, let me ask you, you, you uh, uh, since you don't have to split up quite yet, you will. Um, you are on the south side of the creek. Uh, so the question is, uh, do you want to head to the bridge, the easiest way to get across, following the road the fastest? Uh, do you want to uh, split before then and part of the party go down and try to ford the creek? Or how do you want to proceed with this? What's your What's your approach for doing this? I think the picks will expect that. They think the Archelonians are soft bellied wimps, anyways. I wouldn't use the bridge. So go down a ways and and try to try to ford uh, uh, a little ways along. I can give them. They can detail likely spots to cross. Okay. What's the group consensus on that? I think that's fine. What was the what was the plan, or what was the say again? What you were going to do? So it's to to move off away from the bridge, mm. uh, which is an easy crossing, mm. uh, and instead ford at another point so as well, to avoid the picks. Let me ask this, is the bridge like a fortification? Like do, uh, are there guards of the bridge that like would be holding it right now or is it just a bridge? It's a, it's a solid wooden bridge that has been uh, built there. I mean, it, it's, it connects uh, the fort with areas down to, to the south. Uh, so it's a relatively uh, important thing, but it's not fortified. Do we okay. know for sure that the bridge is the least safe passage, or is this just a guess? Like, are we able to like? Oh, you don't know if it's a, you, you know that it is the easiest passage. I mean, you can just obviously cross the river there or the creek without a problem there. Sure, but yeah. it may be the picks will be there though. Right. It's it's a strong strong a tactical guess on my part. Uh. I'm okay with Fort in the River if we think we can avoid the pigs. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm fine with it. All right. Uh, so you will move down a, a good distance uh, away from where uh, the bridge is at. Um, uh, find a, a likely spot. It's still a fast moving creek, uh, cold, wet. Uh, and so. You're going to need to make. Well, hold on a second. Let me let me just uh, adjust my doom clock down here. I'm just going to make a spend here. Never mind me. Anyway, um, so uh, I'm going to need you to make a test for going across uh, the river. This seems like athletics to me. Does that seem like the appropriate skill for for crossing this river? Sure. I don't see particularly a survival skill. So let's do that. So if everyone could make an athletics test, um, you've, you have some experience, you've gone to a fording point, taking the time to do that. So let's say the difficulty is a one. Well, I rolled double 15s. So nice. <laughs> making my third doubles this night. <laughs> so great. If I choose to try and pick a path by skipping a, across, like like skipping from rock to rock a, along the surface, rather than just endure this, can I make an acrobatics check? 
Sure. Actually, you know what? What you can jump across is the bits and flotsam from the bridge, which are floating downriver. Oh. Uh, so yes. Um, I, I'll try that. <laughs> okay. Cool. I get one success. One success. Um, uh, and two successes, uh, Keith. Right for you. Yep. Uh, and what about for you, uh, Uthwald? I, I'm thinking survival is appropriate. I have survival skills. Yeah, I actually think this is more of a question of not getting caught by the current. So it's actually a physical thing okay. here at this point. Athletics, then. What did that give you? There you go. Looks one. Perfect. All right. Uh, so you are good. Um, so uh, I'm going to say that you're going to take some damage here, uh, uh, Amala. Uh, um, uh, uh, what I'm going to do is when we come into uh, the next scene, I'll roll for it at the start of the scene. So it should be some some hazard damage that you have here. Um, what What goes wrong? I think what goes wrong is um, I, so at a certain point, I do get caught up in the current a little bit, right? And, uh, but I, this has happened before, it's no big deal. And so I pull out um, Elise, uh, my dagger, and I jam Elise into the stone and, and I'm just like, you know, to, to like, to prevent the current from like taking me, you know, and, um, and I'm and I'm like I'm I'm like saying like you know hold hold strong sister I'm glad I'm I, I, I'm glad I'm glad to see that you have you have reconsidered your position and the nature of our relationship and that you are no longer harboring ill feelings toward me and then it just <laughs> pops and I, 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 I go like flying down the river like at that precise moment it, she lets go and that's it for me I like I'll just like hop like from the, one, the bridge to the other. I could scoop you out briefly, like, try and help you up. I'm like, have have you ever heard the term fumble fuck? <laughs> <sighs> and I just like, I just, I, I look at Elise in my hand still, and I just like, like very, in a very disappointed way. Check my head. And that's the person you're sending off by herself. All right, just... <laughs> We're getting all the bad luck out right now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> gonna do great. She's gonna do great. Um, <clears throat> so you are going to break into uh, two directions. I'm gonna kind of mark myself on the map here. We'll assume we've kind of come in uh, one that way, one up that way. Um, so does seem to me this is a less a uh, the most important thing right now is for me to ask how much speed versus how much stealth. I mean, mm. uh, uh, like, what difficulty do you want to set for your stealth check? Let me start with the group of three. I so. A difficulty of one is being very cautious, taking your time, moving along carefully, but it's, it's, it is taking time. Difficulty two is a little more challenging. You're trying to pick up the pace. Difficulty three is you're more concentrating on movement and speed than you are on the stealth side of things. How do you wish to approach that, you three? You have four momentum, by the way. You can also spend momentum uh, to uh, give yourselves uh, an extra d20 when you roll. So how does a group check like that work? Well, the, like if we set it at a three, which I don't realize, uh, how many, would everybody have to hit three successes or how would that work? The, the game, I don't see that. yeah, so the game uh, uh, has people doing individual roles rather than, than group roles. Okay. 
Um, so there is a higher risk. I mean, everybody has to check in that case. So you might want to use momentum. Now, let me tell you about another resource that you have. Uh, each of you has three fortune points. And fortune points are like luck points in this game. You can use those to add a die, clear damage, give yourself an extra action, um, or de declare a fact about the story, something, an important change to things. So you do have both the momentum and everybody has individually three fortune points for these two sessions. So, I mean, what what are we risking here? We're just risking getting spotted? Yeah, the risk here is that you will uh, in, encounter uh, another band of picks, maybe significant depending on how you roll, before you reach the settlements. Uh -huh. The other side of the coin is how much time it takes, meaning how much chance of there being, uh, you know, more settlers killed before you get there. Right, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the bridge is already burned down or destroyed or however they did it. Like, we're running into them no matter what. I guess it doesn't, I don't know how important it is whether we run into them, bef like, now or run into them while they're killing villagers. So, I'm in for moving quicker, but. Our veterans. Given our numbers, I'm up for speed. Edric? I'm up for speed, too. Okay. Uh, I don't think that, um, well, yeah, I, I think I think for this group of three, our chances of getting getting through stealthily are pretty, are pretty slim. Um, I think that we should, we just need to try to get there before the picks reach the fort. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is We'll, I'll have you make stealth checks on the off chance that there's success. You're welcome to spend momentum or fortune points to add an extra G20 to your roll. Um, and tell me what you get result-wise. I'm going to get that, get those details on the table, and then I'm going to check in with Amala. Okay, so how many, so we need, are we going for two successes, crew, or three? We I heard, speed, or we heard three for full speed. All right, so we're going to have to spend a momentum to be able to get through. We have to, have to roll at least three dice to get through successes, right? Yeah. Or just accept that we're going to get spotted. Yeah. yeah I mean, you don't have to spend a momentum. You could just go for it and, and see. And perhaps fantastical luck will visit we you. <laughs> All right. All right, so go ahead and roll those and let me get those numbers. Who's going first? Somebody roll. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and spend a point on that. And, and okay. Just yeah. You know. Sure. So we're trying to use oh. stealth. Right? Oh, and uh, what is your uh, focus with your stealth? I think it's only one. <laughs> Yep. So one. still pretty good. Two successes is is respectable. Maeve. Um. Yeah. I'll just. I'm not going to spend momentum. I'll just roll. Okay. Two d twenty. Uh. I got an eight and a fourteen. I've got ten agility, two stealth, and two focus. So okay. it's at least so it's at least one. One success. So we go to three. And finally, Edric. You want me? Oswald? Yep. If, yep. Go ahead and make your stealth. Uh, sorry, uh, Uthwald. Sorry. My so focus is uh, two. Expertise yeah. Two. So you actually get three successes. So that's six. So that's about two thirds of the way before something happens. All right. Um, and we will come back to what that involves here in a moment. Let's cut to you, uh, Amala. What is your balance of stealth to speed here? I'm going for the target one stealth, like really slow. Okay. 
like really slow. We're taking Go ahead time. and roll your stealth roll in. Indeed. Uh, I think I got two hits. Um, let me just confirm that. Yes. Oh, yeah. My stealth is really good. Yeah, I got okay. I got two successes. All right. Uh, with a, with an extra success. Um, so you will very slowly and carefully make your way along through the woods, mm -hmm. uh, uh, along the side of the road. Um, and you will re quickly realize that, that this is not just a minor incursion. You have been here long enough to know some of the markings of the different clans. They don't usually work together. But you've seen, in spotting some of these patrols off in the distance, uh, the mark of the Red Eagle, uh, the, the, the mark of the Gray Bear. I mean, there, there are several different clans moving and operating here. So it's a, uh, a significant thing. Mm. Um, and on the road, though, as you are stealthing along, you will uh, come across someone else who is also not a picked, who is also stealthing and moving sort of eastward. And you will see this, this figure cloak up uh, like a gear bag on his back, and he is, is uh, moving away. So I'm going to come back to you, but I want to know, ignore him or see what's up. Okay. What you is your, what oh, is your, oh. I'm going to, I'm going to try to sneak up and put a, and put, and put a lease up to his neck. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to that. So you are, uh, you three have, have made it through, uh, the, uh, a good deal of the, the the woods and the stands and things like that. Um, when you will uh, break through and see that you've kind of stepped out uh, uh, across into a larger group of Pictish warriors. Uh, there are about eight of them there, and they are they are clearly regathering, regrouping for their next move. So the question is, um, do you want to set on them, or do you want to try and make a break for it? They clearly way. spotted you. You've come through louder than you intended to because you are moving swiftly. How far away are they? Um, I would say you would come out so they're maybe 10 yards from you. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at these two to see if they're going to be if they're going to be brave or if they're going to be smart. I'm not going to abandon them, but I'm not going to. Maeve, what do you do? Fire or run? <clears throat> um, where are we at momentum-wise? Four. Four. Um, I would like to spend one to ask the GM a question about the situation. Sure, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, what can we do to turn them back now? To keep them from uh, moving up on the village is what you were asking? Yes. Okay. Um they clearly haven't met any resistance. Um, so if you are overwhelming right out of the gate here, you may be able to to disrupt their morale. Okay. Um, I'm firing okay. for whoever okay. looks like their leader. Okay. That seems like a, a, a reasonable thing to do. Um, so let's have you go ahead and make uh, an attack roll. Difficulty is one. Uh, they are aware, but they're they're turning to to react. 
Okay, so I got an 11 and a 20, so that's one success. And then I don't know if the 20 does something bad. Yes, it does. Um, so one success, um, you will fire that off uh, and uh, hit this fellow who looks like he's the 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 the, the strongest one, the, the tallest of these braves. But you'll also hear that as your bowstring snaps. Oh, um, so go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Okay. Oh, so uh, you will actually drop that guy with that shot. Okay. Um, uh, essentially, they have five points of vigor, and then any more does a wound, and that will drop them. So you will hit him, put him, and he will drop down even as you hear that, that string snap. Um, Edric, you said you were kind of waiting to see what happened. She draws and fires rapidly and drops well, one of these eight. I'll, I'll do the same thing. Okay. I'm not gonna... <clears throat> Spending momentum or fortune or anything I should know about? No, I'm, I'm just going to take a shot at, um, so maybe just drill the, the leader of this, the, the, this group. The, yeah, the tallest, most visible of them. I'll, I'll shoot the first one that steps towards the fallen leader to render aid. Okay. Let's have you roll. So that's a hit. That is a hit. Uh, so that uh, go ahead and roll your damage. And that is come on. Oof. Oh wow. Okay. Uh so where does that land uh in this guy? Um he, he rushes to his you know his, his stricken comrade and uh and and lifts him up to, you know, uh, grabs the arrow and, and, and lifts him up to, uh, to see how badly hurt is it. he has and my arrows right through his back and out his chest and into his companion. Oh, yeah, so they're pinned together. Yeah, I mean, huh? You already did guy. Okay. Uh, so you butterfly pin them together. All right. Um, uh, uh, Uthwald, uh, th th your two comrades have turned and fired even at this this – much larger group. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to try to... I don't know if it'll cost me anything or if it's a reaction. Uh, but I want to add to the uh, the effect. I'm going okay. to see we're a patrol-sized group. So, as they decided to do that, as Mav fired off, I'm just going to reach to the back and do a, a name. I'm just going to say the name uh, Amosek and put a, uh, a a whistle that's known as a that's known as a command. It should be known to the picks mm -hmm. to pull a patrol this way. Okay. Um, this seems like. Uh, we're going to have you roll a uh, a command roll. I think that's the appropriate skill for kind of giving this impression. Command or persuade. Does that seem right? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you spending any momentum or fortune on that? Uh, yeah, let's spend a, a fortune. Okay. They'll give you an what extra 20 you can, it'll, it'll add another D20 to your roll. Okay, so when I pull up command and hit the button, it says dice two and I should change it to three? Yep. Yep. Nice. So that's a really decent roll. So I'm going to say, I mean, you do that 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 whistle out. You don't don't attack. You you stop and do that call up. 
even as their leader and another one drop. Um, so each of you have been super effective on this round. So they will break back into the woods. Um, uh, they fall back to, to regroup. Uh, essentially, they're probably going to pull at least 100 yards before they, they you know, gather their wits about them, giving you guys uh, a free path to head towards the settlements. Sound good? Yeah. Here we go. Uh, um, would it require me to use a fortune point to have an additional string so I can restring my bow? No, you just do it outside of combat. In okay. combat, that would have been a serious complication. <coughs> cool. Yeah. Um, so let's cut back to Amala. Amala, this guy is moving along. Uh, you want to stealth up on him. I do, yeah. So let me, let me have you roll your stealth, and I'm going to roll his observation. Uh, I'm going to re-roll one of mine. I, could, I have That's one good. hit for sure. Okay. I got two hits now. All right. So uh, you will – you don't completely surprise him, mm -hmm. um, but you are on him kind of before he realizes. He's been, been mm -hmm. listening for the sounds of the picks and so on, and you, you're a more subtle thing. So um, – you're on him. You've got your blade towards him, and he's got his uh, uh, hand uh, on his weapon belt. And uh, you can see that he is Hyrcanian. He's from the Far East. You've seen him around before. Uh, he's a tradesman who's passed through the fort, kind of a shady guy uh, by the name of Vendum. Mm -hmm. And he'll be like, Ah, you have uh, sur you have survived. You've good. This excellent that uh, there are more that are alive than this is good. You're the the swordswoman. I say yes, and this is my little sister Elise, and she likes to play hide and seek. But it's a game that she's not very good at. I fear because she's always found in the same place, right between her canyon's ribs. What are you doing, sneaking about in the woods? Ah, uh, that the 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 the, the blade uh, delights in the taste of Hyrcanian blood. I I I that that's not a good omen for me. You having passed my path here, I I had heard the drums change. I was out traveling, and uh, I wished to to escape, uh, to flee to the east. I hope to to make it uh, across. Uh, follow Stavlov's road eventually and cross, cross Thunder River. Let me ask you a question, Hyrcanian. Do you have any brothers or sisters? I have a large family. Brothers, sisters, families, aunts, cousins. Would you say that you ever engaged in any sibling rivalries with any of your brothers and sisters? Petty jealousies? grudges held between you and them? Uh, minor things, nothing that will uh, upset my heart when I pass on. The, the, the little things that families do. Uh, this is an, an odd line of questioning. <sighs> Never mind. <clears throat> it sounds like your siblings were eminently more reasonable than mine, and so you may not have any particular advice that I would be interested in here. You're you're a cell sword, right? I am, indeed. Look, I am a tradesman, so I out here in and amongst the picks in this this assault. Ah, uh, I certainly would desire assistance, aid, protection. Perhaps, perhaps I could convince you to travel with me. I could pay you good coin to make sure that I make it across Thunder River. We it's would be good, willing. Good coin. We would be willing to help you with this, I think. It might require, I might need a moment to confer with my companions, if you don't mind. And he looks and it takes him a second to realize you are talking about your weapons. And he's like, as you wish. 
I take a moment privately. And then I come back um, with my weapons propped up against the tree where we were having our council. And I say, we have agreed to accept your offer of employment, tradesmen, but uh, only if, I have to tell you, this is going to go a lot easier if you properly deal with my older sister, Martha. And I look at my bow leaning up against the tree. She is, she is very, very vain and <clears throat> She's mistrustful, but if you were to pay her some grand compliments, let her know that you admire her and that that you that you're a that you're a, a gentleman. That I think we would be able Do to assuage speak of that, her concerns. That lovely bow that stands against the tree. Say that louder, please. The most most lacquered wood of great beauty. Where I come from, the Hyrcanians, the bows are recurved and and perhaps ugly, bloated here. Yes. The, the, the beauty of the wood and the carving, the craftsmanship shows oh, through that's, even that's, at that's, this that's distance. Enough. She'll, that's enough. She's she's. We don't want it to go too far there. She's she's already quite quite full of herself. Um, very well. I think we are all in agreement. We will protect you from these picks, Hyrcanian. Where are you going? We must make our way, uh, not directly along the Settler's Road, but beside it and uh, head head to the east. We can make our way to the city there. There's a man who will be giving me payment. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, I have deals that have been made and uh, I will be be paying you a, a good, good deal. Um, there are some others as well. Their names yeah, escape yes, me, if I'm uh, being uh, perfectly uh, frank. Your no, no, no. There are some others um, who are expecting me back or something. I don't know. It was all a little unclear. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't remember the names. But I'm sure I could I'm sure I could pick them out uh, by sight. I, it may be... It may be... It may be dishonorable for me to just go off with you like that without telling them at least. I can, if your friends wish to to join in, in the service, I can certainly make it worth their while as well. Good, good. They are most competent. Excellent, all the better. Shall we, shall we head east then? Yes, let's. Okay, he gathers himself together um, again and he begins to move off the east and you will see to the north uh, kind of an illumination hmm. from where the fort is at. That's on fire or something. <laughs> yeah, as if, as if yeah, that was it coming. has been, been uh, put to the torch. Um, and you'll begin to move off to the east. Uh, you three, uh, 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 so Maeve and... Uh, Othwald and Edric will get, skirt out away from these picks. Um, you're heading up towards the, the Settler's Road, um, and uh, you can see that in the distance that there's uh, the first sort of settlement that you're seeing. It looks like it's like something has already happened here. Or, or is in the process. But even as you're kind of talking about that and kind of, okay, now how do we move up on that? You will see the glow off to the west of you. And all three of you will realize the implications that the fort has fallen. It has been put to the torch. There will be no help coming from that direction. <clears throat> And I think that's where we're going to stop for tonight because that gets us a good break point that we can take up with next time. Um, and we'll get rolling with uh, uh, Vendum and the settlements and uh, what the bow thinks of all this and uh, payment and all of that. And we'll do roses <laughs> and thorns 
at the end of session two. Is that cool with everybody? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm cool. Going to stop the broadcast.